watching the video. So we're actually going to be installing a super rare JDM part uh, on the car. It's actually in the engine bay. It's just a dress up part. Um, you know, as you guys know, I've been spending a lot of time in the engine bay, kind of getting it to where I want it personally. Um, I have a lot of carbon and um, titanium bits in here uh, with a little bit of white accents around the car. Um, so it's just something that I enjoy doing. And um, one of the parts that I was missing that a company stopped making is the uh, power steering cover over here. And the company that I'm referring to is Password JDM. They actually made pretty much a cover for the entire motor, you know, all different pieces. It was all different parts of the engine bay that they actually made some high quality, really nice pieces. Uh, but unfortunately, they went out of business and they don't make them anymore. So they're very, very hard to come by. So there was one specific piece, as I mentioned over here, that I really wanted. And while I was searching, you know, it wasn't something that I was 100% uh, focused on and really, really looking for. But it was one of those things that I was like, if I come across one, I'm going to grab it because uh, it's just one of those pieces I've always wanted. One of my good friends that I talk to often on social media, um, he actually came across this piece for me and he sent it over by a company or an account called Couch Performance. or It's K-O-U-C-H underscore performance. I'll put it on the screen for you guys. What that company actually does or that account is actually they source these really rare pieces that people uh, tend to not be able to find. Uh, one of the pieces they actually had for sale was a Password JDM uh, power steering cover over here. So as soon as I saw it, I messaged them. I was like, listen, I want it. Let me know. <laughs> and before you know it, uh, they sent it out and um, you know, now it's here. So here is the part. This is the Password JDM power steering cover. Um, and one of the really, really cool parts about anything from Password JDM is they're handmade. Um, so not every single piece is exactly the same. So if you notice, the finish is not 100%. The actual, the weave of it isn't perfect. Um, every single one is like a fingerprint. They're all different. They all have their little imperfections and everything. So what I'm actually going to try to do um, is kind of revive it a little bit, uh, bring the shine back, get rid of the haze. And how I'm going to do that is using some uh, Jeskar correcting compound or some Sonex perfect finish. I got to see which one works better. Perfect finish is more of a subtle uh, kind of compound. It's not really aggressive. Correcting compound is a little bit more um, aggressive. So I might just go straight to that, see how it works, and then go from there. Uh, and then after that, we're going to ceramic coat it. Password JDM parts are actually known to yellow over time, uh, especially in the engine bay. It's just a gel coat. It's nothing um, extraordinary. It's nothing special. It's just literally to make it shine and give it that glossy uh, carbon finish. Um, so by putting a ceramic coating on it, it's at least going to uh, slow down the yellowing process. What a lot of people actually do with these is actually bring it to an automotive place and they actually get it re-cleared. Um, but I'm going to take a stab at trying to, you know, refinish it by polishing it out and then um, ceramic coating it and see how much better it turns out. Either way, I'm okay with the finish, just knowing that it was handmade and it's a very, very rare piece. Uh, stuff like this is, you know, that's just the way it is. Uh, and it's actually full carbon fiber. And it's not some fiberglass piece. It's actually really carbon. This thing weighs like a pound, if that. <laughs> Um, so it's it's pretty cool to have that plus that logo right here is like I said pretty rare and It's pretty cool to have in my own car. It's gonna get rid of this ugly tank right here, which I have always hated uh, I recently installed the Cobb overflow tank and got rid of all the uh, tanks over here um, So that is kind of the only ugly thing in the engine bay and uh, this cover is going to make it look beautiful over there And it's gonna you know flow with all the other carbon and stuff I have in here Let's go ahead. Let's start polishing this thing out and seeing what we can do I'm not expecting a hundred percent here I'm just gonna try to uh, you know revive it a little bit bring some of the gloss back get rid of the hazing a little bit And then ceramic coat it and make it look nice again and protect it So let's go ahead start polishing it out and see what we can do All right, so this is what I'm going to be using this stuff works wonders You don't have to do too much work to get hazing off and scratches um, but I am going to be polishing this by hand, mainly because I don't have a small enough uh, polisher. Mine is a six inch polisher for, you know, mainly paint correction. Um, I don't have one of the smaller ones, a three inch. Uh, so we're going to do this by hand. So I'm just going to get a high pile uh, microfiber, you know, instead of uh, the lower ones, you want something with a lot of grip. Um, so it helps cut through. So I'm just going to use one of these. This is kind of my go to kind of all around microfiber towel. So we're going to use this to uh, hopefully polish this out. So before you do anything, use some type of IPA. I use Geon Prep just to kind of wipe things down, get any, you know, random things that may be on there, any oils, dirt, whatever, um, just so you don't do any more damage before you actually start polishing. Right, so 
now we're gonna take some of the Jess Card Correcting Compound, shake it up, and we're just gonna put a little bit on the corner and start doing just small circular motions, just like you would if you were polishing the car. Same concept, you're just gonna do it by hand and then work in a small area and then kind of just work your way around the piece. Let's start in this corner here and uh, see what happens. If I take my finger, it's pretty smooth. And if I go over here, see how much more rough it is? It sounds like sandpaper and then go over here. I'm gonna go over it again, but that just gives you a good idea. It actually is working and it's taking off, you know, the fine top layer of grime and haze. So you can kind of see the haze over there and then it's much shinier here, much more depth. You can kind of see the hazing right here and then how much shinier it is here. So I'm gonna go over that a few times, um, you know, see if I can get any more of the hazing out, but really don't need to do too much. I'm not trying to make this perfect. I'm just trying to clean it up a little bit. So let me put a time lapse on this because I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me polish this for the next half hour or so. <laughs> uh, so let's get this knocked out. wiped it down with some more Gion prep uh, but it is the gloss is definitely more uh, there's a lot more depth to it a lot shinier a lot cleaner remove the you know first layer of haze that was on it you know it's not perfect I spent probably about 20 minutes on it um, you know and all the cracks and everything like here and down in the uh, areas where you put the bolts um, it was a little bit harder but I did what I could just doing it by hand with the microfiber uh, and it came out good enough for me I'm happy with that um, so what I'm going to do is uh, wipe it down one more time with some Gion Prep and then we're going to apply the first layer of CSL. Now in between each coat you got to wait two hours. Um, so this is going to be a longer night for me because I want to get this on tonight because um, I don't want to put it in the car without ceramic on it. So I'm going to go ahead get the first layer of CSL on. You literally just wipe it on, wipe it off. You guys have seen me ceramic coat things a, a million times. Um, so let me go ahead and get that done. Wait two hours and we'll uh, start on EXO. two hours but you can just see the depth of the gloss that's on here it's just getting better and better the more you prep it the better it's going to come out um, so like I said I only spent about 20-25 minutes polishing it out um, but just even putting the first layer of CSL on it's just you can see how much more depth there is compared to when I first showed you at the beginning of the video uh, the best part about it is EXO over here um, that actually gets better over time so the longer it cures the more gloss comes out the more depth so that's the next step. I'm going to wait the full two hours, do uh, one layer of EXO, wait another two hours, and then do the final layer of EXO. So one CSL, two layers of EXO, and then we can put it on the car. All right, so everything is complete. I have the one layer of CSL on. Uh, and then I got two layers of EXO. So it's been about five and a half, six hours since I've basically started this. Uh, it turned out really nice. Definitely the gloss of the depth uh, is much more vibrant, much deeper. Obviously there's still some fogging a little bit, but that's just the coating that they use on these pieces. So it's not actual clear coat like you would put on paint. It's just like a gel coating, like an epoxy. Um, so it's getting the job done. It's protected. It looks a lot better than it did when I first took it out of the box. If it ever ends up yellowing or fading over time, I'll just take it off and bring it to a shop, a car, you know, an automotive shop. Uh, and they can re-clear it for me and make it look brand new. To install this is very, very straightforward. So it's literally only two bolts holding it on. So it's this one right here. And then on the side, on the back down there. Um, so those bolts pertain to uh, the power steering bolt right here, as well as the one down there as well, which is holding on 
uh, the actual harness. Naturally, I have Titanium Works hardware there, so that's a T30, and that bolt down there is 11 30 seconds, so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead, pop them out, slide the cover in, and put the bolts back in, and it'll cover all that up. So let me set the camera up and uh, get it installed. <laughs> Apologies, the bolt down there is actually a uh, 5 16 so um, it's not the 11 30 seconds that I mentioned, um, but yeah, so my mistake. Also, we got to remove the power steering cap. It's simple, you just twist and then pop it off. Make sure when you're taking this off, it doesn't drip anywhere. Have some paper towels handy because uh, power steering fluid is, will eat through pretty much anything. So, All right, and now we're gonna place the cover right over it. All right, so I ran into a little bit of an issue. Not really an issue, but something that I have to deal with. Um, since my harness, my, my full wire harness for the car is actually coiled up right here, usually it's back on the firewall right where the AOS is. Um, so since that is there, you need to reposition it and put it over here. Um, and what's happening is this metal bracket right here is not able to reach the hole um, because this part is getting in the way. Uh, so what I actually did, you can kind of see it right here. I had a little metal bracket. Um, you can see the hole there, and then I just attached it to the actual metal tab on the harness. Then I'm able to uh, use that bracket as an extension and uh, have the hole line up right there. Kind of hard to see, uh, but you get what I mean. So now it's out of the way. It's not scrubbing against the uh, actual carbon or anything. So we are good there. Thankfully, I had a bunch of brackets to play around and figure out. And also I had some spare titanium hardware. Um, so everything is good. Looks like it's meant to be there. Everything is uh, safely out of the way and it's not rubbing or pushing up against anything. So let me go ahead and finish this up, get the cap back on and uh, wipe it down. We'll be done. So that was a good day, a good mod. I was able to add some carbon fiber. Also added two new uh, pieces of tight, actually, yeah, two new pieces of titanium. Uh, I had an extra screw that I just filled in with that hole there. And then the extra one down there on the other bracket, you can see one there and there and there. <laughs> I have a little bit of a spare uh, bolt bin of titanium pieces, uh, titanium hardware. So I was able to uh, get that done. Really nice part about it as well. The Renegade Motorsports uh, cap fits perfectly fine on there. It looks really good against the uh, carbon fiber. And yeah, really, really cleans up the engine bay. It gets rid of that ugliness. You can kind of see it right there, which uh, I thought it was going to completely cover that part. Um, but honestly, it's way better than what it was. Looks a lot cleaner. And also a really nice part about it is the weave is going the same way as the intake, as the alternator to cover, um, so everything is nice and even. If you guys are looking for any specific JDM piece that's hard to come by, make sure you go check out Cash Performance on Instagram, really cool people. Uh, they got back to me really quickly and they shipped it out uh, just as fast as well. But that's all I got for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all about the specific Password JDM piece or anything else on the car, be sure to ask them below. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.